Hello friends, Robert Mead from The Power of Imagination. Today I have an exciting uh, book that I'm going to begin to cover. One that has been the uh, foundation, primary foundation for my knowledge of how to achieve my goals. Okay, Neville Goddard, who many of you uh, hopefully know about now, is an amazing teacher that uh, taught how in a practical way, you can apply the law of assumption, which is akin to, but not exactly the same as the law of attraction. And I hope that you have already, perhaps, already purchased some of his books. If you haven't, I'm going to recommend this, this particular book as your primary source for understanding a lot of the things that I've been talking about the, the past few months about how to use the power of your imagination, the power of awareness, to accomplish your goals. Now, the power of awareness um, can be easily found online. It can be found in PDF form. It can be found as an Audible on YouTube and other sources. You can get it for free. However, I highly recommend that you actually purchase the book or as part of a collection of his books so that you can uh, underline, study, and really get the most out of it. Either way, let's begin, and I'm going to really dive in, and uh, I'm going to be reading some ex excerpts from the book, and then I'm going to be giving you some explanation as I go along, because this book absolutely has changed my life. It's given me the life that I'm experiencing now, my dream life as Beach Bobby, living on the, living on the beach in uh, exotic islands and places that I've experienced the last four years. And this book I give more credit to than any other book from the awesome author Neville Goddard. And let's get started. So, The Power of Awareness was written originally in 1942. Chapter 1, we're just going to be covering a few chapters today. Chapter 1 is I Am. Here in chapter one, Neville notes that your I am or your I amness is your center of your being. It's the very center of your consciousness. It's the awareness of being. And he says this very important statement. The great discovery of this cause <clears throat> being I am, we ourselves, are the cause of our reality, what we're conscious of. He says, it reveals that, good or bad, man is actually the arbiter, or the cause, we could say, of his own fate, and that it is his concept of himself. And we're going to get into self-concept, and what does that mean? It is his concept of himself that determines the world in which he lives. So this concept, this self-concept of yourself, what you are conscious of, what you are awareness is aware of, is really what gives awareness its power. And thus, the title of the book, The Power of Awareness, The Power of Consciousness, The Power of Developing and Thinking from the Concept of Yourself, the Life You Want to Live, the Person You Want to Be, and How That Applies. Neville goes on to say that, uh, in other words, he breaks it down for you. If you're experiencing Ill, Ill health, knowing the truth about the cause, you cannot contribute the illness, for example, illness to anything other than a particular arrangement of the basic cause, cause substance, which is an arrangement which was produced by your reactions to life and is defined by your concept. I am, in this case, I am unwell. This is why we are told uh, scripturally to say to ourselves that let the weak man say, I am strong. So it's by this assumption, this cause assumption, this I am, this arrangement that we manifest by this arrangement, what it affirms. And this is very important, friends. He says, this principle governs every aspect of your life, be it social, 
financial, intellectual, or spiritual. So understanding this foundation of I am and that we are the cause is really where the power of awareness lies. And it has affected myself and the students that I've taught in over 45 countries on a personal level and changed many of their lives for the better. Neville emphasizes this still in chapter 1. He says that everything, everything depends upon its attitude. Its attitude toward what? Itself. So it's your attitude toward yourself. What you believe yourself to be, that which will not affirm it, if you will not affirm it as true of yourself, it cannot awaken. So what you, we're really doing is we are awakening that desire, what we want to accomplish and be in our lives, and then believing it to be true, and then seeing it come true in our lives. And it starts with I am. It starts with your self-concept, who you believe yourself to be. And it's arranged. It's arranged from a lot of things, the way we're programmed throughout life. But the point here is that it, it can be rearranged. We can develop, and that's what we're going to get into here, is how we can develop our self-concept. And Neville emphasizes here, if a man's concept of himself were different, everything in his world would be different. So how we think about ourselves affects everything. As a man thinketh, so he is. You become what you think about, said the famous Earl Nightingale. And that is so true. What we think about expands. These are all various ways of saying the same thing. Same thing. There, Neville says that there is only one I am. When you say I am, how many are we including? Yourself, right? There is only one I am, and you are that I am. In chapter 2 is a subject of consciousness, which ties directly into your self-concept. Consciousness is the one and only reality. It is the first and only cause substance of the phenomena of life. So you become what you're conscious of. Let's delve into that a little further. He says if your consciousness is the only reality, it must be the only substance. So he says you and your world are one. So here's what we need to do. You must turn from the objective appearance, what we see in 3D, what we see on the outside in our world, turn from that. You turn from the objective appearance of things to the subjective center of things, your consciousness. So this is where you go within and you go really into the subconscious and you turn to what you imagine to believe as true from a conceptual level. So you, uh, again, it's the subjective center of things, your consciousness. He says, if you truly desire to know the cause of the phenomena in your life, how to use this knowledge to realize your fondest dreams, you're going to dig into this book. Because this book will help you understand and apply uh, the power of awareness and achieving your dreams, achieving your goals. The difference, he says, does not consist in the variety of substance, but in the arrangement of the same cause substance. So it's the arrangement of our minds, okay, what we believe and consent to and accept as true that will manifest, will reveal, will, will realize what we experience in our life. It starts here. It goes on to say that your, your self-concept, the arrangement of your mind, is always arranged how? It's always arranged in the image of all you believe and consent to as true. is just across the road from the beach which 
the road is, is considered the main road here. You'll hear a motorcycle run by once in a while. I apologize for that. So, moving forward. Uh, Neville uh, gives a great illustration here about how steel becomes a magnet or gets demagnetized simply by the arrangement of the molecules within. He talks about how there's a, a electrons that is how they're arranged in that piece of steel that makes it either a magnet or not a, a magnet. And it's the same with our mind. It's how our minds are arranged. He says it's the arrangement of the arrangement of the particles. I was comparing this to our minds because when the particles of a, a piece of steel are marshaled in ranks that a number of them face one direction, then it be, the substance within that piece of steel becomes a magnet. Likewise with our minds, when our minds and our thinking are focused and our attention is given to what we want, imagining and believing that it is true, we're marshalling all of our thoughts and attention in one direction, and our mind becomes like a magnet. Again, he emphasizes that this is really a psychological event. He says, because your reactions were, uh, reveal where you live within psychologically, and where you live psychologically within determines how you will live out there right, in the visible world. So, it is the primary or primal cause of consciousness. What we personally conceive ourselves to be. So in summary, so far, consciousness, our self-concept, what you are aware of being. So you could ask yourself, what are you aware of being? There's a series of questions you can ask yourself to determine that. So it's your state of mind, what you're conscious of, right? It is also your, your self-concept. So again, your self-concept is your attitude toward yourself. It's all that you believe and accept and consent to as true for you, right? It has everything to do with what you believe and accept as true. That's your self-concept. And in order to change our visible world, you have to start with how you view the world, your self-concept. Moving on to chapter 3, which is excellent because it's all about the power of assumption, chapter 3. Now, what is the power of assumption? What is the word assumption entailing here? Well, an assumption is believing something as already being that. You're believing that it already is. You're assuming it to be true. You're accepting it as true and that it will happen. Not only that it will happen, but you're accepting that it already is, okay? It already exists and it's a, ma it's a matter of drawing it and bringing it into your life through focusing on it and believing it. And I love this statement from Neville. He says, all that befalls a man, all that is done by him, all that comes from him happens as a result of his state of consciousness. So all that befalls you, all that happens to us and for us, all that is done by us, all that comes from us, results from us, it happens, friends, as a result of our state of mind, our state of awareness, our state of consciousness. A man's consciousness is all that he thinks and desires and loves. What absorbs your attention? What's your main focus in life? What do you focus on and give your attention most of the time? About the life as you would like to see it? Or perhaps about the negative world around you that is telling you that there's no way you can have that? You don't have the background, you don't have the knowledge, you don't have the uh, education, you don't qualify for that. How can you possibly move to wherever it is you want to move to? That's just, uh, you don't have enough money right now. Uh, you, how are you going to get work? All the negative things that we could be dwelling on, right, is part of the world around us 
and their self-concept of themselves. But what is your self-concept of you? That's what matters, right? Now, people talk about wanting to transform. They want to see transformation in their life. They want to be going from uh, poor and not having enough money to wealthy, healthy, and having lots of money, right? For example, they want to go from being boring, uninteresting, and, and uh, not having the partner that they like to manifesting and being with the, the girl or woman, or woman or man of their dreams, right? They want to see their life changed for the better or transformed. Well, how do we do that? Neville says that you are transformed by the renewing of your mind. It starts here. It always starts here within, friends. To be transformed, the whole basis of your thoughts must change. Well, obviously, if you always do and you always think what you've always thought and you've always done, you keep repeating the cycle. You keep getting more of the same. So fundamentally, to change your results, you have to change your ideas. All right? You have to change your self-concept right? in order to transform. That's obvious. Uh, it starts where? It starts with desire. You must want to be different and intend to be before you can begin to change yourself, right? Then you can make your future dream a present fact, right? So you get who you believe you are. That is, you assume you are already it now, all right? As Neville states here, you create an ideal of the person that you want to be, how do you do that? You sit down with a pen and paper and you write out the person in life you want to have in detail. Next, you assume it, right? You believe it is something already yours. You assume it to be true. That's using the power of assumption. You assume it that you already are that person and that you already are that person now. So you need to believe it, you need to be it first. Not see it, I'll believe it when I see it, but you need to believe it first by changing from within, because from when within out, right, that's how it works, from beliefs, self-concept, out. That's how it works, friends. He gives a great illustration here, and I love this. He talks about a moth, and he compares it to a, being like a moth to a flame. Have you ever seen a moth die into a candle or die into a, a light or a hot lantern? Right? You can hear it sizzle. I mean, that moth has decided to dive into that flame and sacrifice itself. Neville, I love this illustration because he says that we need to be like a moth to a flame. Years ago, my son and I uh, went camping in the woods in uh, southern Utah, absolutely beautiful, by Penguin Lake. And we were stayed in my, my sister at the time owned a small cabin, and it was a very um, simple ancient cabin, you could say. Um, at night, there was no electricity. You could uh, have a little fire outside, but inside there were no lights, okay? We were in sleeping bags, and we had candles for our lighting overnight. Well, there were certain areas that had no windows on this cabin, and it was cold, so we're wrapped up and snuggled away in our, in our sleeping bags, but coming in through the cracks in the windows were moths. Pretty soon there were dozens of moths in the cabin, but guess what? They weren't bothering us. They were dive-bombing into the flame, and every time one of them dove into the flame, folding its wings back, diving in, just head first, completely surrendering itself to the flame. You could hear it sizzle, and you could smell it. I know that's rather graphic, but a graphic illustration is sometimes exactly what I need, uh, that I need, and you need, we need. So he says it uh, this way, he says, about the uh, moth, he says, you must be the thing itself, right? If you want 
your life to be like a glowing flame of success, you need to be that flame. And that's really what a moth is doing. It says you must be the thing itself and not merely talk about it. Oh, this is what I want. Um, this is what I hope for. Not merely look at it. Oh, that's so beautiful. I wish that was my life, but there's no possible way. He says you must be like the moth in search of its idol, the flame. Talked about how the moth was spurred on with true desire, plunging at once into the sacred fire till he became one with it. So you have to be willing to, like the moth, destroy your old self. You have to be that focused on the desire and outcome you want to have that you're willing to say, I'm no longer going to be that person. That old me is gone. I am this person. So in my own case, I became Beach Bobby living in the islands, living on the beach, long before I actually saw it in reality. But I became it here first. And I'm going to be speaking to you more in the future, and it's already in my other videos that you can certainly see, and I'll leave some links, of how to imagine yourself and transform your mind into fully believing and accepting, and then seeing the realities develop in your life, okay? You must be conscious of being healthy, if you already know what health is. You must be conscious of being secure, whether that be financial or in a relationship, if you are to know what security is. So all of this, uh, friends, is absolutely, to me, just... I've read this book dozens and dozens of times. I've listened to it on YouTube dozens of dozens of times. In fact, I probably read part of this book every day because the power of awareness is absolutely amazing. So we've almost made it through the first three chapters. I'm going to give you a little bit more here and then we're going to leave further discussion for next, next time. But Neville talks about the importance of developing that greater self, the self-concept. Now, <clears throat> He says, to assume the new concept of yourself, you possessed what the rest of nature does not possess. See, this is a very human thing, using your imagination, because he says, imagination is the instrument by which you create your world. So in order to create this new image and um, concept of yourself, it starts with imagining it, sitting down again with a notebook, pen and paper, and writing it out the qualities that you want to have and be in your life, along with the things in your life that you'd like to have, do, and be. Well, I'm going to go ahead and close it with that. So, The Power of Imagination, if you don't have that book yet, I recommend ordering it. You can order it on Amazon, and you can certainly order it online from other outlets. You can also read it and study it for free online. I have it in book form. Of course, I have it on my Kindle. Um, I listen to audibles with it. You really cannot go over it enough. And really, these first three chapters that we've discussed are really about the importance of self-concept because it's starting with yourself, what you accept, consent to, and believe as true of you. If you want different results, you need to change who you are from within out. And you can only do that through study, meditation, understanding, and application. And I am a firm believer that that study, knowledge, and belief starts with reading. Reading good books. In this case, Neville Goddard, because he teaches specifically how to become the person and have the things in life that you want to have. 